your product doesn't solve a problem, mm -hmm. how do you pitch it? Ah, okay, great question. So it's very easy to um, pitch people a product that removes pain. It's like, hey, yeah. if you take this pill, then your back pain goes away. What you're selling is, hey, you take this pill and you might avoid being sick. This is why we say painkillers versus vitamins. Like when yeah. people are in pain, they're like, I need a painkiller right now. Give me a painkiller <laughs> or give me three shots of tequila. I need something to turn off the pain. That's like that acute, like I need it right now. Vitamins, you got to convince people, listen, the study said this, you're getting more vitamin C, you need vitamin B for this reason. You know, da, 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 da. So um, when you're pitching it, I think, you know, having a prototype, having some early beta users who have used the product and who talk about how much they love it. And then there are frameworks for this. One is called Net Promoter Score. Uh, there's yep. another one where you ask people, if this product went away, would you be devastated? Would you be really disappointed, somewhat disappointed, or not disappointed at all, right? And Raul from Superhuman right. recently wrote a blog post about this. So there are ways when the product's in market to try to get to this very issue, which is, hey, it's not solving exactly a problem for them. Like Netflix, I mean, you could say Netflix solves the problem of what am I going to watch tonight? But really, you know, video games and Netflix and things that entertain us and delight us they're harder to quantify in that way. And so when pitching them, I think early user reviews and the people who use it telling their story. So if this was okay. um, if this was an app, uh, like say calm.com for meditation, if yep. you had somebody who said, my daughter was having a hard time going to bed and it was drama every night until we got sleep stories and now I let her pick a sleep story and... There's no fighting when she goes to bed and she's asleep, you know, nine out of 10 times within 20 minutes. This has been a game changer for our family, which is true in my family, actually. London my, loves it. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> that testimonial, a testimonial can, and somebody else selling your product, your customer selling your product is better than you trying to sell your product. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Because people yep. don't believe you. You're, you're an interested party. Right. You made it. Right, you're like, oh right. my, yeah. my, my meditation, you know, my sleep app, meditation app, you know, solves all the problems in the world. It's like, yeah, prove it. Well, okay, here's a customer, and here, by the way, here's five customers, and that's why ratings, you know, in a way, when we see the ratings in um, on Amazon or Yelp, you know, those right. ratings in Yelp help us make sense of the world, right? And people like giving their feedback. So I would ask your customers or your early users, can you? Yep write me, you know, send them a survey and say, hey, can you rate the product on these four different categories with numbers? And then as yep. the last thing, say, um, uh, as a bonus, uh, and we'll give you a $5 gift card from Amazon for this, uh, please write a Yelp-like three or four sentence review of the product, what it means to you, how you use it, and what delights you about it. And if you ask them in that way, hey, write a Yelp-like review of our product, they'll give you a Yelp-like review. Uh, right. and they'll get the $5 <laughs> gift card. And then you pull all those. Now, we do this for Founder University um, every time with Emmy Award winning producer Jackie. At the end, we say, hey, write a Yelp-like review. Then we take all those answers and we give it to the marketing team and they make ads out of it, right? Okay. How yep. brilliant is that, right? So you're getting feedback from your customers and your customers, in our case, founders and entrepreneurs, they understand our product and can discuss it better than us. Same right. and so okay. we might see we've been doing some marketing tests for this week in startups because it's going so well. We want more people to find out about it. So we've actually been experimenting with spending, you know, uh, you know, thousands of dollars a month uh, on some ads. And one mm -hmm. of the ads we've been running is just here are the reviews from iTunes. And when we run the reviews from okay. iTunes, somebody said like, "This is like getting ten MBAs." And I was like, "Wow." <laughs> I mean, I couldn't come up with that. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, watching this week's right. startups, like getting 10 MBAs. You know what? It is 10 years every year. It's an MBA. It clearly is like getting 10 MBAs. I love it. But I wouldn't have come up with it. So that's what I would wish for you. Um, okay. What is the product? Do you know? It's, um, it's like a, it's similar to, it's a cross between an arcade game or a video game and a table game. So it's an interactive mm -hmm. ping pong table. An interactive ping pong table. 
Oh yeah. my lord. I love playing ping pong. <laughs> and I love the idea. Does it keep score? Does it light up where the ball hit? What does it do? It actually goes out where the ball hits. So the object of the game is to there's squares lit up and you can there's there's lots of different modes, but the basic mode is that you are trying to knock out all of your opponent's squares. Oh my god, you made yours. Tetris ping pong? Yes. Or breakout. It's more breakout ping pong. Breakout. Yeah, more like breakout. Oh my lord, you are a genius up in Syracuse or Oneonta or wherever the hell you are. <laughs> what is this called, this product? This is a genius <laughs> idea, sir. Uh, tap Glow. Tap? Yep, T-A-P-G-L-O. Tap Glow. We're going to have to yep. work on the name, sir, but this is a great idea. Right. <laughs> and you're like an inventor up in 15 feet of snow up in uh, Syracuse or Oneonta or Buffalo somewhere? Yep. Yeah, yep, Buffalo. What's Buffalo your background? Rochester. Are you like some electrical engineer or something, or just some whacked out guy who just comes up with sick, awesome ideas? Just a whacked out guy that comes up with awesome ideas, I guess. How, <laughs> how many bong rips did you do before having this idea? This is a killer None. idea. <laughs> it, did, it did come from Burning Man, but uh, it did. It you were at Burning Man and had this yeah. idea. Yeah, so I was I was tech support on a large art car, and. Uh, Oh uh, really? Which one? Uh, it's Forest House. Oh okay. I don't know Forest House, uh, but I, you know, I I go to Burning Man every other year or so. Um, listen, dude, I don't know what you were tripping on, but <laughs> by all means, Jackie, whatever he has, give it to all the Founder University attendees next time. We're gonna spike the punch and come up with better ideas. This is a great idea. I'm not, I'm dead serious. Do you have you built the prototype yet? Oh, yeah. They got a fully working prototype and uh, starting production pretty much this week. How much is it going to go for? Uh, retail is 11K. 11K. Whoa. And yeah. so that means you've got a 50% margin on it or something? Yep. Fantastic. Do, so you, know, I, I, do you know 2-Bit Circus? Uh, no. Okay, look up 2-Bit Circus. They are building okay. new arcade games and carnival-type games. They have a location in Los Angeles in downtown LA. Um, Brent, Brent Bushnell, who is um, the son of the founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, is built this new style arcade. He would buy this from you, and if he does another 10 locations, which I think he is, he'd buy 10 of them from you, or he, they might get Bob, you buy two of them. And then there's a spin, spin, is a ping yeah, pong, you know, spin. You yeah, should. I to them already. Oh, you did. Did are they? Yeah. Did you give them an exclusive? Tell them they'll be the exclusive in their city if they buy four units of each. You know, I I did, and uh, what they went say? great. They got they got an awesome response, and they have not said anything. Oh, they, they went dark. Reached out, yeah, reached out four or five times. And nothing. <laughs> oh my lord! I want one of these tables. It's a great idea. This is exactly the type of thing that will appeal. To Generation X, Atari 2600 kids like myself, the millennial generation that grew up on, you know, Call of Duty and, you know, started to get onto yeah. mobile gaming. And now this new Overwatch, you know, Minecraft generation, um, you know, who grew up on ca casual games. It's you, You're literally going to be a multi-generational win. And you could do this with pool and you could do this with uh, shuffleboard as well. And what's great so about it is you fun. can come up with all different variations of games. Like I would love yeah. to play this where you the name of the game is Every Volley. Here's my version. Yep. Every Volley doubles the number, the value of the game, right? So I hit it, it's one. You hit it, it's two. I hit it back, it's four. You hit it, it's eight. Then it's 16. You get the yep. idea. So now we're at yeah, 64. Yeah. We've gone back and forth, whatever, times. Yep. And... It lights up a small ping pong sized um, target. Whoever hits the target first gets the points. If you Excellent. miss the, if you screw up the volley, in other words, if you break the volley, yeah. then you yeah. lose that of value. So as it goes up, it's like a game of chicken. You understand the stakes are getting right. higher yeah. and higher and higher. Yeah. And if yeah. you hit it, you win. So you can try to target it, but if you don't volley it and you're on the 12th volley and this is worth whatever, 128 or 256, whatever, 512, boom. Now you're going to get the, oh God, 
You are a genius. I love this. Keep going. The lesson here is go to Burning Man, kids. Work on our cars. Come up with creative ideas. This thing's going to be a juggernaut. You got to patent the shit out of this. <laughs> All right. Well, th- I appreciate that. All right. All Send right. me an email. Send you got my email, Jason at Calicanus.com. I want to see this. I may want to buy one of these off you at cost. You may have to do a J Calvert. I, I, I may need to get this at cost from you. I, I never asked for a okay. freebie, but I think asking at cost okay. after how inspiring I've been to you would be. Yes. Absolutely. You wouldn't take that the wrong way, would you? No, I wouldn't. Okay, there we go. See that? <laughs> it's the life of J-Cal. All right, thanks for calling in. 